Hi, my name's Rosanna and I'm a choral scholar at St Helens Wheat Hampstead and also the daughter of the director of music, Rob. I'm here making this video to explain a little bit about the work that goes into the music that you're hearing in the online Sunday services, specifically the song Like a Mother with Her Child, which includes member of the junior choir's voices. The first step for every single piece that we record, my dad and Simon will pick the music and then Simon will record his organ part and send it over to us. It's easy to do it this way round so that I can listen to his part and sing along. So I was recording the part that the junior choir members are now singing. Then my dad will balance it to make sure it's as clear as possible for the junior choir to record over and send it off to all the parents, making a Dropbox file as well so that it's easy for the parents to submit their recordings. What pretty much happens is you use headphones, you'll listen to the recording, the audio file that my dad has sent to the junior choir and then just sing over that. It's pretty simple to be honest. Um, and then from there, once we've got all the files, my dad will convert them, import them and then patch together a pretty rough track originally. Then he works really, really hard spending hours and hours putting together all the files, making sure that the balance is right so that you can hear as many of the voices as possible and because everyone's put in so much hard work. Also aligning the files, adding reverb so it sounds a bit more like we're in a church as well as adding in the silence and making sure that the silent parts are as silent as possible. Finally he'll bounce the final mix so that it's perfect and it's how it sounds. Also he'll play it to our family usually just so you know they can get the Milner family seal of approval. Then it will be sent off and used in the Sunday service. We've put in so much hard work and so have members of the choir to make this happen and we really hope you enjoy the track. I hope you're all doing really really well, keeping healthy and keeping safe. I can't wait until everything is back to normal and I can enjoy our Sunday services in person but for now Please enjoy the wonderful, wonderful services that have been put together by so many people. Bye.
Welcome to St Helen's Church to our online Sunday worship with me, Reverend Richard Bannum. Thank you to the children and our junior choir for the introit they've just sung, uh, A Mother with Her Child, based on the prayer of St Anselm, written over a thousand years ago. So a thank you to each of the children for singing, uh, for the parents for their support of the children, but most of all to Rob for the countless hours that he's putting into making our music uh, such a delight to worship to in this uh, challenging season. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday, and that's why I am stood by this uh, field of sheep. That's the location. Now our farming practices have changed dramatically over the last 2,000 years, but the principle of a good shepherd or a caring farmer who takes great care of his flock, whatever the weather, come rain or shine, has not changed in that time. And sheep have not got any more intelligent over the last 2,000 years, and that's why there's a uh, an electric fence running behind me uh, because the Bible tells us uh, that sheep go astray. That wonderful parable of Jesus searching out the lost sheep. And indeed in Isaiah, Isaiah says that we, like sheep, have all gone astray. So isn't it good to have a God who in that parable of the lost sheep goes out and searches for the one sheep that has gone astray and brings him back into the fold. Isn't it good to have a God who forgives us and restores us whenever we are lost, even if we have willfully gone astray? So let's take a moment to think about the ways in which we've gone astray during the past week and the God who restores us and forgives us. And after a moment of quiet, we'll have our opening prayer. This is the collect or the special prayer for Good Shepherd Sunday. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command that all your people may be gathered into one flock to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And now our Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Like a shepherd, God cares for us. He guides us through the wilderness and provides for us. So we're going to lift our voices and sing now. The Lord's my shepherd and I'll not want. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me love. Your endless mercy for 
Gospel today comes from John, chapter 10, verses 1 to 10. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. George wept. He'd spent a lifetime building up his prize flock of Swaledale sheep. Morning and night, summer and winter, the round of lambing and shearing, the anxious work of healing and rescue, the cups and rosettes modestly displayed in the farmhouse kitchen spoke volumes of his labour of love. And then, foot and mouth, the men from the ministry, the vets, the smoke and stench as the whole flock was slaughtered, and George wept. And in the despair, anguish and pain etched deep in the lines of his face, one saw deeply into his face and into the face of God. The foot and mouth epidemic was nearly 20 years ago and George was not alone in his experience. Up and down the country, farmers were suffering from the loss of their livestock and their livelihood. But in present times, that experience has been mirrored and magnified. In the current pandemic, thousands have lost livelihoods and many have lost their lives. We've all seen on television the individual tragedies unfolding before us. And in the despair, anguish and pain etched deep in the lines of those faces, are we also looking into the face of God? The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Psalm 23 is a great text, yet she is sometimes like a distant but much-loved relative. We rarely visit her, yet she turns up at weddings and funerals and comes to stay after Easter. It's a second reading set for today and is part of today's music. We are glad to see her, for she always brings good cheer. She encourages us to celebrate the faithfulness, generosity and overflowing goodness of God. And the God, the Good Shepherd, and the liberal host. But there's more to it than that. For the psalmist understands one of the great mysteries of life, that is when we own the valley of the shadows that we need to celebrate the most. The world lives in the shadow of death. Each one of us is touched by death at some point in our lives. Some have experienced sudden death in the current pandemic. Others meet it in the violence and conflict that is all too common in our city streets. 
Any human being is sensitive to those who experience sorrow, frustration and anger in these circumstances. But it is precisely in these shadows that we need to celebrate God. Huda was a Lebanese Christian who would experienced the horrors of life in Beirut at the height of conflict. When asked how she and her church survived, she replied, We simply rehearsed the faith and sang God's story. That's what Psalm 23 does. In the Valley of the Shadows, it invites us to rehearse our faith and sing God's glory. When the shadows overwhelm us, telling God's story reminds us of greater realities, that sin and death will not ultimately triumph. And it reminds us of one reality above all. In the face of George, who's lost all his sheep in the foot and mouth epidemic, we are confronted with one of the greatest realities of them all. For in the depth of God's, George's suffering, we see God suffering too. If we ask, where is God in the suffering of the world? The answer is that he's right there in the midst. If we ask, why doesn't he stop it? The answer may lie in the gift of freedom, freedom that he's given to the world and its people. God is there in the suffering of patients of Conivarus in our hospital beds. In the light of God's power and his love, the presence of evil and suffering in the world is difficult to understand. But what we do understand is that God suffers with us and that he provides us with the resources to cope. Amen. Keep safe.
we join together now in prayer. Lord Jesus, we are all members of your flock and as our shepherd, we depend on you. At present, many of us are experiencing that valley of shadows. There is so much uncertainty about the future. We fear the unseen virus that is afflicting your whole world. So many face financial uncertainty. We are easily mesmerised by a constant media bombardment. Like harassed sheep, we get confused and in our minds we rush hither and thither. Lord Jesus, during this time of lockdown, we ask you gently to lead us the quiet waters by. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Healing Lord Jesus, we hold up to you any we know who are ill or injured or who suffer from depression or other forms of mental illness. We pray for those who care for them and ask for your protection and strength. We pray for any we know who are grieving the death of a loved one, friend or colleague. In a moment of stillness, we surround them with your healing light. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Even as we journey through that valley of the shadows, help us, Lord, to count our many blessings. We give thanks for the inspired leadership of Richard and Claire and the whole leadership team. We give thanks for the beautiful, uplifting and sustaining worship with its creative thought, skillful technology and lovely music. We give thanks for the glorious spring weather we have had and for the joy of hearing the birdsong uninterrupted by aircraft or traffic noise. And we give you thanks for the spirit of caring in our community and the many creative and thoughtful initiatives we have witnessed. And finally, Lord, we give you heartfelt thanks for the courage and dedication of all who are working in the front line of this pandemic. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us conclude our intercessions with the prayer given to us by our loving shepherd, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
sung that the Lord is my shepherd and we've heard the Howard Goodall anthem, uh, also most famously known from the Vicar of Dibley. Because the psalm today, although we haven't heard it read, is Psalm 23, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He leads me beside quiet waters and he restores my soul. Whenever I read that, I think of the beautiful River Lee running through our village. This fabulous spot with often children playing and people relaxing in the summer. The Lord restores my soul. I hope that whatever this week brings for you, there will be things in it that restore your soul. Things which bring you joy and gladness, even if it is a week that is difficult for you. Before our final blessing, I want to update you on uh, two of our retired ministers. Uh, Jill Hazelwood had a fall, but uh, the good news is she is recovering well in hospital following an operation. Uh, and at the time of recording this, uh, was making good progress. So please do remember Jill and her husband Colin in your prayers this week. Uh, great news uh, which we celebrated on Thursday uh, that John Brennan, our retired minister, has reached the milestone of 100 years old. Uh, a, wonderful, a wonderful man celebrating a wonderful milestone. A very happy birthday to you, John. Uh, we recorded, uh, or, um, two of our choir members, Rob and Rosanna, have recorded a beautiful rendition of Happy Birthday, uh, which we played to John through his uh, window uh, uh, with some other video messages recorded by all sorts of people in our church and indeed the Bishop of Hartford. So would you join us uh, uh, after the service, after the final blessing and the dismissal in singing uh, a rousing rendition of Happy Birthday to John Brennan on his 100th birthday. And of course, we'll do the same again once we're able to gather together in church and we're saving the birthday cake for that occasion. Our Easter acclamation and then our blessing. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! And now our blessing. The God of peace who brought from the dead again our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every work to do his will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and all who you care for and pray for, now and always. Amen. Go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.